All right, peace and blessings from a Christ lifestyle. All praise be to the Most High God, His Son, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Welcome to another episode of Culture in Christ Radio with a Christ lifestyle. All praise be to the Most High. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, we thank you all for just uh, subscribing, uh, sharing the podcast, watching the YouTube videos. Um, if you have already hadn't done so, please stop what you're doing right now. Stop what you're doing right now. The video is going to be here. And go to a ChristLifestyle.com, okay? Subscribe to our email, all right? Also, go to YouTube, forward slash a Christ Lifestyle, and subscribe to our YouTube page. You can find our podcast on all podcast streaming networks. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, before we get started today, um, we want to say today, today's show is sponsored by us here at A Christ Lifestyle. Go to www.achristlifestyle.com. Like I said before, subscribe and get 15% off, uh, 15% off promo code, um, and uh, go shop A Christ Lifestyle or just go support. Also, uh, for those of you that like drinking ionized alkaline water, we're sponsored by livingwater.mytiant.com. That's L I V I N. W A T E R dot M Y T Y E N T dot com for that fresh ionized alkaline water. Notice I just didn't say I I know I just didn't say alkaline water. I said ionized alkaline water. If you don't know what it is, go to livingwater.mytiant.com. We also want to give a shout out to HebrewCare.com. That's HebrewCare.com. It was on episode six. Uh they talked about uh natural healings. Uh, honey um, on the brink of death, being brung back by the power of the Most High God, through fasting, praying, and, and just changing the diet. Now, today, we're also sponsored by Blueberry Cafe Juice Bar and Grill. Vegan Grill. You heard that right. Vegan Grill. They, you can find them on the website at iloveblueberrycafe.com. That's I love blueberry. Cafe.com. They're located right here in New Jersey, 547 Central Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. If you haven't been there, I don't know what's up with you. If you vegan, if you eating healthy food, and you haven't ate at Blueberry Cafe, I don't know what's going on with you. So you definitely want to check them out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for tonight's show, we have one of the owners, one of the owners of Blueberry Cafe. His name is Genesis, but he's just not an owner of Blueberry Cafe. This brother is a herbalist. You know, you can ask him any type of questions. He will have almost any answer from you, from disease to sickness. Uh, he, ha he has those answers by the power of the most, most High God. So, you know, with that being said, I want to introduce Brother Genesis. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Brother Genesis. How you doing? Brother Genesis, you in? Hey, peace and blessings, brother. Yes, bless. You hear me? Yes, yes. Loud and clear, man. How's it going, man? Everything going cool, you know. Oh, bless you, man. Welcome to welcome to Culture and Christ Radio, episode seven, featuring you, oh, man. Oh wow! Yeah, you yeah, yeah. yeah. Time, Spiritual perfection, yeah. Hey, yes, yes, man. All praise be to the Most High God, His Son, Christ, yeah. and Holy Spirit, man. We thank you for coming on. Yeah, man. No problem. You know, I like to, you know, just tell the guests, like, I've been knowing this brother for well over, like, we like 10 years. I met this yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I met this no, brother. Man. I met this yeah, brother six. at the, uh, at the, at the uh, vitamin shop in Newark, New Jersey. Um, I went in there. Corona. Out, Corona vitamin shop in Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, Corona health food. <laughs> Corona health food. Y'all want to go check them out. Um, I met him one day. I was in there just, uh, just on my, you know, flow, just trying to get some information. I met this brother in there. He was working in there, and he was very knowledgeable. Um, you know, and since then, I've always come to him and just asked him, you know, different questions that, you know, regarding health, my children's health, and things like that. So he's he's very, um, the most I've blessed him with a gift, you know? Yeah, and, and just in case your guests, your guests and them think they hear wrong, yes, it's Corona's health food, and um, Corona really means crown, you know? Um, but of course, the evil one will always take, you know, the most high stuff and, and try to adulterate it. So yes, it's really Corona. It's health food right in um, Newark on South Orange Ave there. He's been there since 98, you know, yeah. um, bringing health and healing to the community. 
So, of course, the adversary tried to make a mockery of this whole thing, but we on it still, you know? That's right. And as Corona, as Corona, the coronavirus was going out, man, I was finding myself down at Corona Health Foods more and more, let alone like a lot of people in New Jersey. We was, you know, <laughs> packed outside getting at work, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Mm hmm. Now let me let me yeah. ask you let me ask you this: How did you get into like the herbs, and how long you been into it for? Well, I mean, I born in Trinidad and Tobago, you know, and um, you grow up. That is part of your life, you know. Um, they always have some blue bottle or some brown bottle in the cupboard. Um, and as soon as you get sick, they reach for that and they give you some bitter stuff. Either you bring it out, you know, through um, you know, vomiting or bathing or whatever you want to see, or you pass it out through number two or you pee it out, you know. Um, and it was never really pleasant, you know, because you're a young child and it's bitter stuff. So we was always um, around to the stuff. Then you have bush all around your yard and they're always reaching for the stuff. But um, in terms of um, actually doing the stuff, it really didn't happen until um, when I really, really come to America there, you know? I mean, prior to that, I started dabbling in it, um, you know, a couple of years before I came here. And then when I came here in 2006, that is when I just locked into it i say you know i want to just do herbs so the first thing i do was get a job at the health food store um and i never do anything else i never look for a second job i never tried to do the stuff i was doing back home like bartending or plastic welding or because i do different things you know um cooking so um i just lock in on the herbs you know i say i always wanted to um get into healing and stuff like that so that's that that's when the 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 more or less the um the straight part for the straight journey began yeah in 2006 so, so 2006 that's when you came from america and came over and you had a passion for yeah. it based upon what yeah. you know growing up and you just wanted to implement that into in today's americanized society for your people correct yeah yeah so when i come here you know i i, I was armed with certain knowledge and um you know knowing it to have Everything is in is um in America. The good is here, the bad is here, you know, and um you have to really be focused when you're in America because all the distraction is there. Everything is here, as I say, you know. So um I already come from a culture where we hang out a lot or where we say party, you know, we liming, you know, we drinking, um, eating all types of meat and you know, it's kind of valid Trinidad and Tobago. So I came out of that culture. So it's not hard for me to do stuff like that. You understand? But I wanted to really buckle down and get myself in order and bring something positive to myself and to the people. And, and that's that is what really happened. And that's good you buckled down, man, because like I said, you've helped me out. You know, I was dealing with a lot of things from just, you know, lack of energy uh, to, uh, you know, needing a detox to uh, when I had... Um, Acid reflex. Uh, you know, yeah, 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 man. And you really helped yeah. me out. You know? So you know, I definitely thank you for that. And like you said, you know, you said you grew up. It was a lot of bitter herbs. So do you see? So do you think like bitter herbs is something that we should uh, have in our diet every day, or, or, or what's your take on that? Or should we wait till we get sick or feeling we get sick to start taking bitter herbs? No, no, that's something, that's something we should inculcate. It's just like you have a vehicle. You don't wait until um, you shut down for gas. Then you go get gas, you understand? Or every time you wait for the, the, um, the gas light to go on, then you run and, and fill up or whatever, you know? Um, so you take the same approach, you understand? And, um, the, you know, let your food be a medicine and your medicine be a food. So you don't have to wait until you get a problem. If you maintain your body, then your body is going to maintain you. If you don't maintain your body, then it has consequences towards the action. What, you, what you're putting in is what you're going to get out. Although your body could take a lot, you know, we body take a lot, you understand, before it breaks down. We would attack our heart, and then we would say heart attack. We would attack our kidneys, then we say kidney failure. No, we're the ones who fail the kidney. We're the ones who attack the heart. You know, um, your organs do attack you. You see, so it's all a matter of what you put in. It's the same thing you would put the best in your house, you would put the best on the outside of your body, you know, and all that. 
But when coming to the inside of your body, that's what we neglect. We don't see it as important, you know? So um, like the bitter herbs and stuff like that, that's designed especially for our ancestry. You understand? Uh, you have different races on the planet. You have different types of animals. So everything has a food. You see, everything could feed on something. Um, even plants, they have a particular soil that they like, that they would thrive in in certain climate. So our food is a lot of greens, you know? Um, and so you have greens. Most time, the greens is bitter. And that's mm -hmm. what cleans your blood. It, it deals with your liver, your bile ducts. And so it keeps you strong. Once you, once you have high natural iron in your body, you would stay, you would stay strong. Um, even if you do get the quote-unquote common cold or the flu or the fluid, you know, um, running out, you know, um, your recovery time would be so quick or that you wouldn't even, you would just notice something going on in the body where you could still function at like 99%. And within 24 hours, stuff just leave, you know, um, before you even know it. Sometimes your body deal with stuff without you even knowing. So you just be clicking on all cylinders. Not that you wouldn't get sick at some point in time. You know, sometimes it take years. Sometimes, you know, you may get sick once a year, depending on, you know, um, your makeup and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, um, you always continue to enjoy good health. You know, once you eat and drink a certain way. And so eating and drinking a certain way, you, you, you know, we said bitter herbs. And you said most of your greens are already bitter herbs and have all the iron that you need. So if we're eating a lot of greens and, you know, eating a lot of greens that will help our diet. But what do you say, what do you say balancing out with greens? You know, um, yeah, what do you say balancing out with greens? Well, I mean, a lot, you, like, you know what it you know what it is a lot of people you know some of people they don't like greens and especially children it's hard for the children to eat greens right. so what's what's your suggestion well the thing about it is um you have to make things palatable and um if they see you eating and drinking you know and sometimes they have to create these little games and stuff like that because children you know they really mimic you but Anytime you see you start them off bad and then you, you get certain knowledge and you try to, you know, um, bring them along, it becomes harder. You understand? It's easy to bend a young tree, you see? Mm. But the older ones one gets, they tend to resist a bit. So you, you have to be able to employ a lot of different tactics. So like, for instance, like you're doing like kale or whatever, you know, you want to cut it up very, very fine and small. You know, and do it in certain things, or you could put it in stew, where you could blend it up, or you put it in a smoothie, mix it with apple or whatever. So that way, they're still getting it, and they're not really tasting the bitterness. You know, so you had to find different ways. But if you could start them off from from young, because that's what they know, the taste buds is not compromised. You know, if if you feed a child only bitter, they could never miss sweet because they never know, they never taste sweet. So all they know is bitter. So to them, it's, it's just normal. It's just natural. Now they have exception to the rules. Some children wouldn't take it. You know, so some people want to be difficult and say this or that, but it always would have exception to the rule. So whoever want to play devil's advocate, you know, just forget it. We, we know about that, but we're dealing with, you know, the standard thing. And so you have to find ways to make it palatable for them and mix it up and inculcate it all the time. And once they start getting used to the stuff, because like back home, when they feed us, the first thing you don't really have a choice is not no, no democracy. You understand? They talk about democracy all the time. That already works. It's always a dictatorship. What they lay before you, you had to eat it. You don't eat mm -hmm. it, you start. You understand? And yeah. that type of thing, you know, that's how you, you grow up. It's certain discipline. So a lot of times we allow the tail to wag the dog. And once again, that kind of problem, you'll always have a problem with children and with, with people. You understand? Um, so you have to take control and you have to let them know, hey, look, you want to get your favorite thing here or whatever, you have to eat this. You understand? Or this is good for you. And you show them you yourself eating it. You understand? Because they want to mimic their parents. They want the first role models is really the parent. You see your children doing everything. But then after a while, when you're contradicting and all that, that is when they start looking away at other people. You understand? Because they're seeing a constant contradiction from the parent. 
you understand where the parent moving like okay do as i say but not as i do so when they see you the parent eating and drinking a certain way but then telling them this is good they're not gonna really follow you understand it don't work like that so it's easier to raise children than trying to repay adults so the the, the longer you stay because it's only so much time you have with them you know you understand until they start getting more and more influence on the outside based on society so you have to start it from young and they're the ones who are really teaching you now how to be healthy because now you had a practice where you preach it so it's a learning for you and it, it gives you more discipline because you want them to be healthy the love you have for them you want them to be healthy and it's only one way for it to happen you have to be doing it you know that kind of way and that's what it is yeah no nah, that's that sounds good man i like what you said you know just one way of trying to get the the younger children to eat the bitter herbs is basically like you said mix up apples make it interesting for them so it's not yeah, like you know us as we get older we can like eat grains and eat a different type of ways but for the children you got to kind of jazz it up for right. them and give them some natural yeah. sweetness yeah. you know with, to, 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 uh, to play off the, the bitterness of it right you know blend it up with some pears or something a little coconut water some pear you know um and all them things taste good you know and um before you know it they would start asking you for it and when they do get sick and all that they feel good you know you'd be surprised at what children would like a lot of times we always think they wouldn't like it you gotta try them out first and see and they surprise right. you. yeah now, now with the children let's speak with the adults um what do you think like you know so going off with bitter herbs you know the greens and everything what do you think that ch uh adults should be uh pairing with what do you think the average meal should be for an adult you know to, to have meal? yes to, to have that long longevity longevity of life and to just have overall wellness all right well the first thing i want to correct you with is um the longevity of life um i personally i don't do this for longevity that's that's not in my control that's not in your control true You're i do right. this for quality <laughs> Yeah, I deal with this for quality of life. You understand? Um, the longevity mm -hmm. of the life and all that, that is in the power of the most high. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to, if I live up to 60 or 120, I want to be strong and healthy. You understand? Um, if I live up to 55, I want to be a healthy 55. And that's what it is. Um, so if you could get longevity out of it, based on what, what the most high have in store, then... Uh, but pretty much... Um, one of the first things you want to get a lot of into your body is water. H2O, two part hydrogen, one part oxygen. So that's right there is so like three quarter of your body weight in ounces in water. You know, um, good quality water. Um, whether it's from um, bottled water or filtered water, we want to get the best quality water you can get. You understand? Um, you know so that's the first thing um and breakfast should consist of breaking your fast in the morning should consist of water uh you could warm it up bring it um almost up to the body temperature you know um and consume that four five six seven eight glasses um you know when you just start that water type of diet you start feeling sick so you might only be able to get down like maybe two cups of uh, warm water and then after that, you could go to three, four, five. And um, you want to saturate your cells. You want to hydrate your body. Um, what people depend on today is more moisturizing the body, which is an outside thing. You, you know, you depend on cream and, and oil and, and you're actually um, tricking your own self. So you're moisturizing, but you're not hydrating. And your cells need water. We need water to function. You know, our body is like 82% water. At least it comes down to that, you know. But as a baby, you know, you, you, you start off water and fat as a sperm, you know. Um, <laughs> and so water is the key. Without that, you're in trouble. So water is the first, the first thing you really want to inculcate um, first thing in the morning. And then, um, you know, you could have some form of fruit or so. Uh, you don't want to be mixing like a lot of people have all this fruit bowl. So they're mixing all these different things. Um, and you tend to get some problems with that. Uh, so it's better you eat one type of fruit, you know, or, or fruit in the same category. Like um, you may have, like, let's say you're eating like uh, 
peaches, pears, plums, stuff like that, or, or you do like mango, papaya, you know, or if you're doing citrus, you know, um, or you just eat one type of fruit, like you're eating melon. You eat as much melon as you want, a nice big piece of melon, you understand? And, and don't try to confuse things. Um, the next day, eat papaya, you want to eat half a papaya, you just eat papaya. It's always the simple things, you know, and your body deal with simple digestion, especially if you're dealing with stomach problems. All the mixing because they tell you, okay, this is a superfood and that is a superfood and that is a superfood. And so now you find yourself taking all these different so-called superfood, which is really a marketing strategy. There's no such thing as a superfood. Mm. It's either all super or none is super. Wow. You see, because in, in Brazil, they have the acai. You understand? In America, they have the apples and the blueberries. You see? So in Brazil, they're going to be marketing apples and blueberries and telling them that it's a superfood. But in America, they're marketing acai. So it's the same group of people, and it's all sales and marketing. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You understand? And wherever you're living, the most high provide in that environment, that food for sustenance. Because the animals do it all the time. In the very desert, the Serengeti and all them places, see all these animals thriving in the environment around them. They don't plant nothing. Wow, you man. Yes, you, you understand? You, you so, dropped it, man. You said there's no such thing as a superfood. It's all marketing and strategy, yeah. man. That's that's powerful. That's powerful right there, yeah. man. Yeah, I know yeah, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people's eyes open up to that once you drop it. Like, you know, okay, well, in China, the apple may be considered a superfood because it's just where, right. where it comes from. It's, it's, being, yeah. it's basically coming from another country. But that's it. So that's, you know, that's so making it a Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Now, let me let, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Why do you say, um, why do you, wh well, you said two things. One thing I want to ask you, I'm going to ask you both at the same time. One thing is that you said that uh, that you shouldn't mix the fr mix the fruits, right? And then another thing you said was um, that you should be eat after you drink your water in the morning. You should be eating fruit. Why <laughs> fruit in the morning? Because we we're custom in America, you know, especially like our people. Uh, let's get some grits. Let's get some eggs. Uh, get a sandwich, bagel, you know. Uh, why why go with the uh the, the fruit in the morning and you know opposed to all the other those other things? Well, for one, the reason why I talk about not mixing the fruit because people like to complicate things, right? And um some people wanna know, okay, which fruit could go with which fruit and sometimes you're eating and somebody said, No, don't eat this with that because that ferment like you eat watermelon with something else. Watermelon digests fast and it tends to ferment. So some people have iron stomach, as we would say, where they could eat anything and no problem. And next person try that same fruit bowl, you understand, and get problems. So now they confuse. So to get rid of the confusion, you understand, and what compatible with this and that, just eat one type of fruit. You Make understand? It a, yeah, it's a whole big watermelon anyway. You understand? By the time you cut that and all them things, you might as well try to eat all that watermelon. So even if you eat that watermelon in one week, by the time that watermelon eating, the papaya ripen, the papaya ripen, you understand? So you could get to the papaya now. You see? Then you might have orange. Then you might have mango. So you keep it simple, especially if you're dealing with ulcerated stomach or, or, or whatever digestive problem you may have. So the, the simpler you could keep it, you see, the better it is for you, the individual, right? Now, again, through marketing, they talk about breakfast are champions and um, true, true, also true, um, you know, slavery and all these different things. They come up with all these things. But when you go out in the field, you know, they want to fill up your belly because you not coming back until whatever time, you see? Mm. So they give you all these starches and all these high sugar and all these things and make you eat. Now, them things make you get energy and all them things and make you get size. But then it starts shutting you down. Then they start pushing this thing called protein and all them things. So they make you eat all these crazy things. Then pancakes and all them things. Them things is really processed foods. Pancakes don't grow on tree. So all them things is luxury item because what you're dealing with there is, is your so-called taste buds, your tongue. 
You understand? So they get addicted to all these sweets and these sugars and these syrup and all these things. And so now in the morning, you're craving for these things. And so you go eat that. But if you're not accustomed to that, and you're accustomed to eating the simple things, the things that nature provides, which the most high create, you just be all right, you just be stronger. Because look at something. People get up in the morning, they eat the eggs, they drink coffee, and everything else. And within half an hour, hour, they have no energy. You see? So they had to look for stimulants. They had to buy five-hour energy. They had to drink more coffee. Whatever. They keep looking for stimulants. Because why? They wasn't charged up. Because the food they're eating is not electric in nature. It's dead food. You are electric. Electric body, electric food. That's why when you saw the Matrix and he showed them what they were, he said, look, and it turned out to be a double-A battery. And they was right. Because you are electrical so in order to charge your body just like your phone you have to plug it into an electrical circuit you have to charge it up if you plug it into a dead circuit you wouldn't get no power you understand so if you yeah. can take in dead food which is you know all these crazy pancakes that they use some crazy flour unless it's spelt flour or whatever unless it's good clean maple syrup and all these things that's electrical you're going to be all right. But once your food is not electrical, which these bacon and eggs, these bagels and all these dough, which is white flour, which is stripped of all electricity, what you're doing is feeding your belly, not your cell. So mm -hmm. your belly full, but your cell starving, no electricity. So now you are the log around, all this dead weight. You understand? And it takes energy to do that. So in no time, but when you drink a glass of water, or two glasses of water and you eat a fruit. It's electrical, so it charges up. So you're powering up. But when you eat that type of food, you're powering down. So then you're, 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 you're eating, but you're starving. This is why if you, if you take a picture, as they like to promote Africa, which it is not, you understand? It's a false picture. But yes, they do have some of these people. You would see like the skinny, starving child with a big yeah. stomach. Because what? He like that because he not eating food. And when they do get them food, they get them starch, they get them rice and all them things. You understand? But when, when, when you take a quote unquote, a person who eating, whether it's from America or England or wherever, and you put them next to that person, they're big, but they also have the stomach. So they both have a stomach. So both is starving. One is undernourished from lack of food, and the next one is undernourished from lack of electrical food. So they both have the stomach. So they both starving. They both have no energy. Because the starving child has no energy. And the person who eating all this crazy stuff has no energy. They both have the same thing. But they seem to think, you know, they have a better life. Because they feed in the tummy and not the cells. So that food we eat in is not electrical. So all you're getting is a belly full. But your cells still crying out. That's why you remain hungry all the time. Because your body needs certain certain minerals for it to continue to go on so the, the hunger switch will never turn off because it's say hey we still need this you see so all you're doing is feeding your taste buds the tongue the tongue is our unruly evil which no yeah. man can tame. you yeah. understand that tongue is a serious thing it's not just about words it control everything and the moment right. you try to to, to 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 bring it in check it fights you you know you see i want to lose 50 pounds or whatever First thing Mouth saying is, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I don't want to be a part of that. I want what I want. So tongue not going to help you at all. And then tongue does lie. He say you have a sweet tooth, and tooth have nothing to do with it. But tooth is not tasting anything. It's tongue. But yeah. tongue saying you have a sweet tooth. You don't have a sweet tooth. It's your tongue. <laughs> you see? So tongue put the blame on everybody else. But is he really controlling everything? You're right. And, and you know, you, you pulled out that scripture, like, you know what I'm saying? The tongue is a deadly, a yeah, deadly man. evil. It says, who can, who can control it? It says the, 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 it? the animals of the field can be tamed, different things yeah. can be tamed, but that tongue, you that know, it's, tongue. It's, hard, it's hard to be tamed, yeah, you know? And, you know, so, um, you know, with that being said, you know, if you like what you're hearing right now, you definitely want to go check out, uh, you know, go to Blueberry Cafe, Juice Bar, and, and Vegan Grill. Um, you can find them on the website at iloveblueberrycafe.com. If you're in New Jersey, 
Uh, they're located at 547 Central Avenue in North New Jersey. Also, mm -hmm. if you're in New Jersey, if you need some natural herbs, go to Corona Health Foods on South Orange Avenue in North New Jersey. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Judah Wear. Uh, you can find them at on on Instagram at Judah Wear TM or shop JudahWear.org. Kingdom Pay. We have Azelle. We have Cash App. We got PayPal. Now we have a black owned KingdomPay.com. All right. So if you listen to this, go subscribe to Pink KingdomPay.com. It's free. They're trying to launch by the end of um by the end of July. They're trying to launch this all black platform, which have better rates than Zell, better uh tra lower transaction fees than PayPal and Cash App. Also, um check out Dr. Donovan Smalls, his book Beyond Sports, helping student athletes discover and achieve long term success. So if you have someone in your family that is an athlete, you want to get them this book. It's just uh, a book showcasing. Letting them know is more to life than sports, you know. So while they're playing their sports, they need to begin ready for life beyond sports. So his book <laughs> helps us through the athletes discover and achieve long-term success. It's a great book. Um, so I just had to do that intermission. Uh, thank you, Brother Genesis. Again, you can find them at Blueberry Cafe Juice Bar and Grill. Now, um, what you've gone through so far, you went through um, – you know, just waking up in the morning, getting that water in you, starting your day off with some fruit to get your body electrified, get you mm -hmm. some energy. So you're not, you know, based off all these uh, these uh, carbs and carbs and this this dead food, basically. It's dead yeah. food. And y'all yeah, found out profound with what you said that, you know, during our forefathers and foremothers' time, they when they were slaves, they would feed them all this high, this high protein food and these carbs. To get them thickened out because they wouldn't come, they wasn't coming back so late in the day. Yeah, yeah. That's the right, man. But like I said, yeah. people that listen to this man, this guy has a lot of knowledge. Every time I speak to him, he he just wows me, man. All praise be to the Most High God. Um, so check this out. You know what? Um, uh, what I normally do is in the morning, I normally start the day with about like thirty-two ounces of water. I try to do it every day. Sometimes I don't right. know why I wake up lazy. Sometimes I wake up lazy and I just don't do it. I try to start with 32 and I try to drink half my body weight in ounces. So I try to right. drink around I try to drink around 110 ounces of water a day. Sometimes right. I don't do it. Now yeah. the problem is drinking that water, you start getting full and you don't want to eat, but you know you're hungry, but then you're trying to pack all this food in. What what, what do you say? What do you say but, to that? But you think you're hungry. You see, you think you're hungry because we are people of habit. And so because you're accustomed to eating, you understand? That's why you drink the water. You're not really hungry, but you think you're hungry. And so you tend to eat. And then we program to time, like breakfast, lunch, dinner. You understand? Um, and so because the time passes, you want to eat. Because not only that, your brain knows you already went to the supermarket and you bought certain things. Your brain already knows your favorite spot that you like to go, and it's time, now you have this water in your stomach, and you're willing yourself to want to eat, but you're really not hungry, because something already filled fill the space. And because you're used to a certain thing, you're used to chewing and all that, your body want that, because this, this, this flesh, it accustomed to certain things. So once you're accustomed to doing certain things, it's a habit you have to break. You understand it's something you have to break. The things you do is a deliberate effort to stop it. When you're going to do something, it already takes no effort. But when you want to stop it, it takes effort. You understand? Mm. So it's easier said than done for some people. Some people could stop cold turkey on anything and others cannot. So that's what it is. You know, it's just habit. It's just habit. So you just have to develop a discipline where you have to decide, okay, make decisions. Everything is decisions. So you have to decide, okay, I'm going to eat this way. I'm going to drink this way. And then once you start doing it, it becomes second nature. It's Okay, it's like you have to become addicted to what you're doing. Like a cocaine addict, that's what he is. He's an addict. So don't care what you do. He's going for that every time. He's very disciplined. You understand? In doing what he's doing. Yeah. You had to become that way. 
it had to become first nature to you because that's what happened to me. So like for me now, it's just a way of life. I don't think about it. I don't think about, okay, you know, you smell this and you're tempted for that or it just, it just do exist for me because it's first nature. You understand? Um, I could be a wrong, I could even go cook meat for people or whatever. And it just don't bother me because I'm addicted to what I am doing. You understand? Because years ago, the first person I really delved into heavy was Dr. Lila Africa. You understand? What, and then what was later, that? Hold on, drop, drop that yeah, name Dr. again. Africa. You understand? Yeah, and he was very rigid. Now, that's the type of teacher I could deal with because that is my personality. And so I really was running with that, you know? And then I get a find out about Dr. Sebi and his wife, Ma'a, you know, and the family and stuff like that. And then I start going into Dr. Sebi heavy. And so that is my foundation. And so when he spoke certain things and he said, the gorilla doesn't eat the food of the polar bear, that is when everything fell for me. That is when the dominoes fell. And it made sense. You understand? What is good for the gorilla will not be good for the polar bear and vice versa. And it's the same thing for us. So every race have a food. You understand? So the Eskimo, they designed to eat fish and stuff like that to keep their blood thick and so that they stay warm. You see? The quote-unquote Native American, they could eat buffalo. There are certain things in their digestive tract that could digest buffalo and stuff like that. We come from a more tropical climate, whether it's from Africa or whether we was here, you know, um, or whether we was on the islands. We always was in tropical environment. And in a tropical environment is what plants, greens, leaves, you understand, fruits. So that's our thing, you see? So we cannot be eaten the things we eat in. We only eat in this way because of captivity, you understand? Because of captivity, and we continue to eat even after captivity has ended, if the physical captivity, because what? The captivity of our mind is still there, and we are addicted to this stuff, you know? And we make it palatable, and we eat in it, but it is not our diet. The milk, the cheese, the eggs, that's rotten food. That's not our diet. All these cakes and sweets and all, that's not our... We strive of greens and herbs and plants. That's why when they snatch us from the jungles of Africa or they snatch us from the jungles of the island or America or wherever we was of the Americas, we were strong. They never had to feed with things. That's why they snatch us. And this is why we lasted so long. All races that they put under this kind of bondage, they die off. Or they, they just do exist. Or it's very few of them. We're the only people that continue to survive even after eating this type of diet. Now they're so desperate. This is where all the corona and all these things come in because now they want to implement a direct injection again. They've been doing it. I still had a mark on my hands from, 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 from back in the, the tetanus injection. We all have this. You understand? And still we're here. So all that was part of the eugenics. And they're still doing it. But every time they make something, the most high creates certain things in us. A couple of thousands are we go dead and all, no problem. But the next generation coming through and thing, going and live on. Because the remnant has to remain. You cannot get rid of the remnant of a garment. That's the strongest part. Sometimes you have a jeans or a jersey or whatever. And it, you're still wearing it, an old tattered one. But that's the strongest part. So that's who we are. We're the salt of the earth. You see? You cannot get any rid of the salt of the earth. Because if you do that now, where is the salt loss is safer? It's going to be what? It's going to be trodden under foot of man. And that's what salt is. The more you press it and all them things, it loses the flavor. So they're trying to press we down and press we down. So the final thing they're coming with now is this vaccine. And, yeah, and, they, and, yeah, they really, and they're really trying to push that vaccine hard and fast. That's and, what uh, it is. They're not going to let it go. Yeah, they're not going to let it go. And I spoke about this. So we spoke about this in our new book that we just released called Hustle and Truth, Nine yep. Reasons You're Not Ready for Tomorrow and What to Do About It. For those of you listening, you can go find that book on bit.ly forward slash hustle and truth. We have a whole section about um, just health, uh, talking about eugenics, um, uh, population control, 
uh, vaccination, abortion, different things like that. But going about what, what you're saying, you, they definitely trying to push these vaccines. And, you know, so, someone asked the question, because we, mo- most of us, are, most of us are more aware nowadays to certain levels. I always explain that to my wife. We're aware on different levels. So right now, a lot of people are waking up to, you know what, no vaccine, no vaccines. And someone wanted, wanted me to ask you a question. The question was, it says, what are the best herbs for vaccine damage in a heavy metal detox? Uh, some of the things it could use um, is like cilantro, a lot of um, sea vegetables, like the Irish sea moss, the crunch of scriptures. Uh, you're talking about the, 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 the bladder rack. Uh, any sea vegetable, the, no, the nori, the dulce, the wakame, any sea vegetable you could think about, you could use that because as a matter of fact, when they had bomb Hiroshima and all that, the doctors and them, they took sea vegetables because it would absorb radiation and all these things, you know, and um, that's how they was able to heal the people, you know, say so you want to eat a lot of sea vegetables or why like to call them sea lettuce, you know, the same way it's lettuce on, on the land. These things are like sea lettuces and they have a lot of minerals and drinking a lot of water. Um, and it's not even so much the, the herbs you want to take. It's where you want to stay away from. These things can only take root into your system if you're dealing with things like milk, cheese, eggs, especially that egg white people like. You understand? One of the things people like to get away from is this word called protein, especially animal-based protein. You understand? Something I like to ask people. I say, how it is, right? If you want to build your blood, can you drink blood? You understand? And the answer, 100% of the time, they say, no, you cannot drink blood. I say, but why? I say, but you're weak and you need blood. Why can't you drink blood? They say, no, it don't work like that. It do assimilate. Okay, fine. I say, all right, that's one thing. The second thing is, if a woman breastfeeding and she's not lactating enough, can she drink milk and then give breast milk? And the answer is always no. I say, but why is she drinking milk? Why can't she just produce the milk that she's drinking? You know, and the answer is no, because why? It does not assimilate. Okay, so that's two. That's from the same cow. So the blood don't work from the cow and the milk don't work. So how now? You say you're going to build muscles and you're going to eat the meat of the cow to build muscle. If the blood don't work to build your blood, the milk don't work to produce milk, how could the flesh of the animal, the same animal, not build your muscle? And using the word protein, no. Stress builds muscle. Because if you look at the people who eat all that beef and meat and chicken and pork and all that, you understand? And they don't work out. What happens to them? They get fat. But the guy who's doing that and work out, that's not what gets him big. It's the exercise that gets him big. So you could be eating bowls of rice alone and you go work out, you go put on size. Because your body is going to take the shape of that. If it's a cyclist, your legs go get big. If it's a gymnast, your shoulders go get big. We had to be working out. It's not the thing you're eating. You understand? So you can't take protein to make protein. That's not what makes protein, quote unquote, protein. You don't take glass to make glass. You don't take water to make water. So are you going to take the muscle of an animal to build your muscle? You understand? Water is H2O, two part hydrogen, one part oxygen. So, you know, we start defining our logics. By saying, okay, you need this to build that, and you need this amount of protein for body weight and all that nonsense. When they were snatching we up as slaves, we were strong. Who was measuring protein? Who was doing calories and all these different things? It's stuff that make up to sound important, to make you look stupid and sound stupid, and to sell a product. As I tell in the health food store, I cannot sell anything. You know, you use big words like mitochondria, and you talk about you know, uh, matrix window and uploading protein in half an hour after your workout. And all, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. You it's understand? You how want to assimilate. <laughs> you know? And so they sell stuff. And so they use these words and this terminology. And yet, look at the elephant. All they eat is grass. Look at the rhinoceros. Look at the bison. Look at these strong animals, the ox. Look what they eat. 
and is the strongest. So Darren, you have your answer. So we have to get away from the teachings of the polar bear. As gorillas, we had to live in the jungle as gorillas. The elephant in the same jungle follow the elephant way. The giraffe in the same jungle follow. But we think, no, we had to follow this one mandate, the, the Western mandate. All these animals in the jungle, you know, going to their specific teaching, their specific school, which is the female, all the animals follow the female, the young ones follow the female, they get to teach from the female. You understand? And so the giraffe have to live the giraffe way. They have to know how to eat, how to pull the, the leaves. They don't eat off one tree and keep cropping from the same thing. No, because a toxin comes out and all that. You understand? And they eat high up, the turtle eat low down. You see? And this is how they survive by living the turtle way. The no, device, I... device way. Now, so the Chinese now... live the Chinese way. You're right. Now, going back to, you know, uh, being vegan, right? Because I, 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 me and my family, we call ourselves pescatarian. Like, we pretty much eat like an 85% vegan diet. Um, but we, you know, we have our fish in it. We, we like fish. We have been giving up the fish. And every now and again, we'll sprinkle some cheese on something. Um, so, but your, your thing is, let's talk about the dangers of veganism. When I say the dangers, because when, I, when we first started making this transition, we were eating a lot of stuff that had a lot of soy in it. You know these Beyond Burgers, and we talking about like, uh, like eight years ago, eight about seven eight years ago is when I put down the meat and everything besides fish. So what what are some of the dangers that people need to look out for when they start saying, you know, I want to become a vegan or I want to eat more natural? Yeah, well, the thing is, well, firstly, that term vegan was just coined because um, the plant based people was really vegetarians eating vegetables, plants, and then. Of course, some people come into it with a bad habit, still wanting certain things, and um, they start consuming little fish and little eggs and little things. And so the quote-unquote hardline vegetarians start using the term vegans. But I personally like to deal with that word called a plant-based lifestyle or a natural lifestyle. You understand? So one of the problems that people have, because their mindset wasn't on the right wavelength in terms of, okay, they're going to be dealing with this plant-based lifestyle. They still want to consume the things they was eating. It's the same thing that happened to religion and all them things. They come in with the bad way into another way and bring in some of the stuff because they still want that flavor, that texture, that meat, you know? And so they start making, finding ways to make harm from soy and harm from this, you know? When really and truly, you're stepping away and you're looking to eat plants and you're going to enjoy the plant lifestyle. And so a lot of plant-based people, they eat soy, which is highly acidic, which is um, like a hybrid plant and stuff like that. And they eat all these meat substitutes and highly processed foods, which you really don't want to be doing that. You know, the more processed food you eat, is it becomes, you know, gooey in your system and all that. The, the more natural something is, the better it is for you. And so what people want to do is get away from all these quote-unquote meat substitute. You know, um, so you have a lot of different choices in terms of the, the plant-based meats out there. I always try to tell people, try and get away, especially from the soy, um, the canola oil, you know, and stuff like that. But for the most part, a lot of them use like green pea. Um, they would use like carrots and beetroot and um, quinoa and stuff like that. They really want to try and get away from the soy as much as possible, you know, and try to eat more natural whole grain foods as opposed to eating a lot of processed food. And you want to drink more herbs. Um, you want to get like the red clover, the bird duck, the yellow duck, the sarsaparilla, stuff like that. Um, nettle. That nettle is very good. The nopal, which is from the cactus, um, stuff like that. So you want to make teas. You want to make a lot of herbal teas. You want to drink like the Irish sea moss because it have a lot, of, um, a lot of minerals, you know, because your body make up of minerals. You understand? And so that's what it, it wants, the minerals. So you want to try and escape from um, too much bread, especially if they have yeast. Because most time they put yeast 
in the bread and um and stuff like that and then they use these white pot salt and so you want to keep them things that minimal but anything you're eating you want like a, a a big raw salad with it you know and stuff like that even if you're eating flesh because flesh to me is everything when people say they stop eating meat um they mean beef and pork and stuff like that and everything else they call poultry which no meat is all flesh you understand yeah. Um, whether it's fish or whatever, but anytime you're eating flesh, you want to eat a big raw salad with it because you really can't digest the flesh and you have to eat the fat. A lot of times, one of the mistakes they make when they start this whole quote-unquote healthy thing and they start taking off the, the skin off the chicken breast and all that, that was a big mistake. That is when they start having all these problems because if you go back and look at old shows like Soul Train and all these things, these people was eating all that. They was eating the chitlins. They was eating the pork and everything else, but they had small waist, you understand? And the woman, and, and, and the woman, you know, they was curvy. Even the big woman, they had energy and all that. If you watch the fat woman or the big woman, or I don't know, everybody feel <laughs> insulted or whatever. Look, it's a different side. The thick, the thick, the thick, the thick, the thick, the thick. You watch the thick comes today, and you watch yeah, the, the thick come of yesterday, yeah? It's two different energy. Them thick comes today. No energy, the dead. You understand? Them thick comes of, 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 of past time. When them come in a room, they light up a room and call honey buns and they, they're moving around and they're full of energy. The thick comes now. The, the dead in the water. You understand? Why do you think so that it, is? Because the food they eaten, they eaten mm. processed food. The food we was eating back then, it was still coming from home. It was being cooked home. They were still using yeah. the herbs. They had the, the, they had the skin on the chicken and all them things because that's the part. You know, your joints and all them things, the cartilage, the collagen, all them things. All them things is fat, you know. So when you remove that, it's no longer a whole food. So you take off the, the, the skin of the chicken breast and all them things. All you're eating is fiber, it's cellulose. It's going to pass right through you. You're not absorbing anything. And you're going to be getting the uric acid from it. It's going to your joints. But where's the fat? So they, 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 they go on this you no know, fat thing and start skinning things and and playing around with, with, you know, because they go in some classroom and they teach them these things. But when he was eating these things, and then they change the oil, they start getting your canola oil. Which canola oil come from the, 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 um, the mustard seed and the rape seed. It's two seeds they take, the mustard seed and the rape seed, and they, they put it together and they make the canola plant. That canola plant, that oil was really used for war, for machines and all them things. And when the war stop and think, here these farmers have these acres and acres of canola and, and, and no money coming in. So they put it on the people. You understand? All the canola and all them different things. They use them things to make Agent Orange. Them things is dangerous, dangerous things, but people don't know that. And they stop me from using the little coconut oil and all them things. Now, really and truly, I always tell people, using oil is really not a good thing. You know? Even if it's olive oil and all them excessive things we do. Because the oil is naturally in products. If you eat olive, the right amount of oil is inside that olive. But when you extract the oil, once you extract something, you know, it's a drug. Because that's why a drug is an isolated substance. So you're using all these different oil and things. Your blood don't need them things. You understand? It must come wherever oil is in the olive, should be there. Eating sesame seeds, wherever oil is in each seed. Because it's a whole food. But when you extract the oil and now you pour in oil and blah, it's really not natural. You understand? Then we, we boil food in oil. We call it frying because of a sound. You see? But oil don't come to a frying point. It comes to a boiling point. So when you drop a potato in boiling water, you say boiling the potato. When you drop it in oil, you're doing the same thing. You're boiling it in oil. That's what we're doing. Because mm. oil comes to a boiling point, not a frying point. Is that song, shh, and we say, it's frying. No, you're actually boiling it in oil. And so when you eat that, it makes your blood pasty and sticky and all them things. So all these little things we're doing that's beating us, it's all processed. When if you really want the, the natural oil, the sesame seed oil and all, you could sprinkle sesame seed on your food, and when you chew it up, the oil is released. You're eating mm. olives, the oil is released. But we do all these things because we was introduced to them things. You understand? And we, we had to make things palatable. But it's really not the best. But that's well, what we I, have. 
So, so, and so, um, t- let's talk about Blueberry Cafe, man. Uh, I've been going there for a while. Uh, so y'all opened up, I believe. I believe. I know it was in January. January first, 2017. I, yeah, I knew it was in January. I was gonna say about three years. So, congratulations. Yeah, on that, three years, six months. Yep. Uh, praise be to the Most High for that, man. That was great, man. I see you, you, you transitioned from, you know, working at Corona, Corona's Health Foods, yeah. and you, you know, became the co-owner of Blueberry Vegan uh, mm-hmm. Juice Bar and Grill. And it's it's been great. Um, so t- t- um, y'all don't use no oil there, and you know. Tell no, us I about use the oil. You know, I use oil. You understand? I use oil. I use like grapeseed oil. I would use olive oil and stuff like that. But I'm still telling people, you know, um, the more you could stay away from stuff like that, you understand? The better it's it better. is for you. Yeah, okay. it's better. You know, but people still want these things. You know, and you're doing business and whatever. But I still. Because I still hold true to what I do. And I let people know, you know, what the thing is. If you still want to do your thing, people still go buy a cigarette, although the pack says boy or whatever. You understand? <laughs> but people yeah. like these things. They're addicted to these things. And it's still better. So, in a sense, I like to say, it's, it's like you're doing the wrong thing the right way. You understand? So, if you had to use it, you don't know what type of oil to use, what type of oil to heat. You don't want to be heating olive oil even coconut oil to some degree. You understand? The heating oil is more like the grapeseed oil, the avocado oil, and stuff like that. But if you could stay away from using that amount of oil, it's better for you, you understand, rather than boiling food and oil and all that things. But that's what you're really doing. Yeah. I mean, you told me and my wife that some years ago, and ever since then, like, we, when we do, um, you know, cook food and oil, we do use the grapeseed oil or the... Right. Uh, or the uh, um, avocado oil. You know, avocado, we were, right. Yeah. You sort it quick, you know. You sort it quick, like how the Chinese do when you walk, shh, you know, just a little bit. It's a drizzle, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us about Blueberry Cafe, man. For those of you, for those people who have never eaten there, tell us about it, man. Well, I mean, the whole concept came about, um, you know, because we noticed as uh, plant-based people, especially, um, you know, following the, the whole concept of what Dr. Sebi talked about um, and the people before him, like Arnold Harris and, and, you know, stuff like that, the mucusless diet. And um, there really wasn't anything to eat for plant-based people, including, you know, I never, I, I still don't really eat out, you understand? And so um, we just decided um, that that was needed, you understand? Um, because we always complaining. There's only liquor stores, there's Chinese stores, and we just complain all the time. And we do nothing about it. So have a lot of people sitting down on money, um, and they want to just follow other people and open the same business. And, you know, they don't want to open no new avenue or, or do things or, or be creative because we as a creative people, you understand? And we need to start to just continue to be who we are and to, to shine, you know? And so this is what happened. So we did that, um, and then, you know, you, you see what it is today. As a matter of fact, it had a lot of naysayers. Even when I was doing the diet and talking about um, eating this way, and people were saying it's impossible, that the list is too small and all that. And when I compare the list that Dr. Savi was showing you, compared to the list, I think I did it with you too, of what you're eating. His list was really bigger, but the average person was only eating like about four foods. This list has like about 15 fruits. They was only eating lettuce, carrot, beetroot. You understand? He has the kale, the, the porcelain, the this, the that. You know, um, the grains. Everybody was just eating rice. Brown rice or white rice or jasmine rice. He have quinoa. He have wild black rice. You understand? He have teff. He have camut. He have amaranth. And all these different things. The fonio. He has like about eight grains. So his list is more broad-based than the average food when people look at what they're eating every day. It's the same thing, rice and beans and meat. That's it. And they might just call it a different thing. They might, it's the same chicken. They might say buffalo wings and some ridiculous name and hot dog. And, but it's the same thing they're eating all the time. But when they come into this type of lifestyle, now they say, man, if it don't have anything else. No, but you've been eating the same thing, but they trick you into thinking it's something different. They're just calling it a different name. You understand? It's the same cow butter eating, they call it Philomenion and this and, you know, give it all kind of fancy name. That's all they do. But it's the same garbage. It's the same non-electrical food people eat. 
So this is why we come now and we bring this type of, you know, a food. So at least people have an option and a choice. You understand? Because with everything else in life, your option for the cheap clothing, your option for the expensive clothing. You know, some people who can't afford the expensive clothing, they go buy the expensive clothing. You understand? And satisfy the mind. So it's the same thing. So you have same thing with cars. Anything you could think about. It have an expensive side of it and it have a cheaper side of it. You understand? With this type of um, plant-based food, it's a little more money, but at the same time, it's really cheaper because your downtime is less. You won't be getting sick. You will be feeling healthy. You won't have to spend extra money buying stimulants and all these different things. And I always tell people all the time, how is it that you are asking your body to work double time, triple time, over time, two job, three job? Your body bringing in, let's say, 100,000 a year. And it says to you, all I want out of this 100,000 that I, the body, is bringing in, $10,000 in herbs and vitamins. And you keep the next 19,000 to buy your Lamborghini, your Maserati, your house up in Short Hills. 90,000 is yours. All I want is 10,000. And you refuse to give your body that making that money to afford you this extravagant lifestyle that you want to live. What do you expect the body to do after five years, ten years? It goes shut down, go lie down in the bed. So now your Maserati pack up. You can't live in your house because you lie down in some nursing home. You understand? And all the stuff you like, you can't use it. Your foot swell up big, so you can't put your foot in the gators because your, your damn kidney is compromised. Because you refuse to give your body 10,000 out of the 100,000. It make. So it, it had to go on strike. And that's how people are to see it. You see, you have to treat your body the right way because it's your body. All you have is this. You're, you're stuck in this, you know. You're stuck right. until mm -hmm. touch time, until you have to leave this earth. You understand? Until yeah, you leave you this earth. And you know what? You know, I, that's what I try to tell people. Um, you know, we try to tell people that it's not that much more money when you when you do go like change up your diet and everything and start living a more plant based or, or eating more healthier foods, it's not yeah, that yeah. much of a day. It is a little bit more, but it's not that much more. Like you, you know what no. I'm saying? So not that much more. And in the long run, you you you're doing better for yourself in the long run. Like you said earlier, eat for quality of life. The most high is gonna That's bring it. give you the most high is gonna give you the longevity of life. You know what I'm saying? That's it. He, he's marked how many days we have. But we can just eat for the quality of life. Now, mm -hmm. what um how often should we detox? How often should we be detoxing? I mean, if you could if you could reboot every 21 days or every three months, it's up to the individual based on um, you know, his job, his lifestyle, and stuff like that. If you could do it um every seven days, um, if you could do intermittent fasting, you know, um, because while you're sleeping, you know, your body getting rid of stuff. You understand? So um, for 12 hours or so, you're up, let's say, from 4 in the morning till 10 in the night or whatever. I mean, you shouldn't eat in all them hours. But um, during the night time now, your body starts shedding things. This is why you defecate in the morning when you get up. One of the reasons why when you drink that water in the morning, the first thing you do, you go to the bathroom and you defecate. Sometimes you go twice and a half an hour. You understand? Um, and that's the next thing. A lot of people constipated. They eat eat three, four times a day and go off once every three days, sometimes once a week, you know? Um, if you eat them three times a day, you should be going off at least three times a day, you understand? Um, but a lot of people constipated because they're not drinking enough water. They're not drinking water and they clogged up, they're eating a lot of flour products, you understand, with yeast, and that yeast is still active. So when you drink that, when you eat that, that yeast and that bread, and then you drink soda and all them things, and that thing swell up. You understand? Yeah, man. And it expands, and then your, your stomach starts getting like a balloon, you know? And it, it just keeps getting distended and distended. And all that stuff accumulates inside there. So you have to defecate at least, at least twice a day, you know? And it, it should be full, and you shouldn't be spending half an hour on the toilet. Mm. The same amount of time it takes you to urinate is the same amount of time you should go because it's like a rope, you know, it's supposed to just come up. You understand? And that's it. Within a minute, two minutes, you should be done. When you had to sit on the toilet, like a throne, 
Why right, they call it the throne room? <laughs> because you sit down there like some king. You're not drinking <laughs> enough water. You're not yeah. drinking enough water. And you're, stra you're straining you your know, body. You're constipated. You understand? And you had to make noise and face. And then you self had to run out. That side. Yeah, because it, the, the stench, the stench that, that, that you know, is, 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 is like you eat something there, like something rotten inside. Because you're not eating enough greens. So you don't have that chlorophyll in, into your system, you know? And once you once you eat in a certain way and all that, you wouldn't even have that smell. You would go in the toilet and somebody would go right behind you and they wouldn't even know you're defecated because it's no smell. It's not normal to smell that type of putrid um, thing. It's not normal. I tell yeah. people all the time, you know, like back home, so I go in the bush, in the jungle, and inside they're full of animal. And you don't see no feces, you don't see no shit or nothing. You don't smell it or nothing. You can't even tell it the animal, granted it has some animals that already come and eat the feces because some of them live off that, you understand? But they have no waste management because what they're defecating is organic. It go right back into the soil. We had to have waste management because we really produce waste. You understand? When you look inside, it's like worms and all kinds of different things. You see, because we really produce in waste. But them animals who live in outside normal, they, it just disappear. It's biodegradable. What we have not biodegradable. It's terrible. Uh, you're absolutely right. So you, do you think like the more we drink water and the more intermittent fasting, um, the healthier we'll be? And we'll be able to, because a lot of our people, we walk around with that heavy midsection from the breads, the years of, you know, the years of different yeah. you know, food. So we start drinking more water, intermittent fasting, we should be able to lose that, correct? Oh, yeah. One of the things, one of the things um, that they could incorporate is a herb called Cascara Sagrada. Cascara Sagrada. It's a very bitter herb. Very, very bitter. Um, and for the people who cannot handle the bitter herbs, they could take it in a pill form. It's, a comp it's plenty of companies out there, but one of the companies that you could find readily available is like um, a company called Nature's Way. And they could take two of them pills like every night. They could run it for like um, seven days and then take maybe three, four days break if they don't want to get addicted to it. It's not, it's not, a, um, it's not a laxative, it's a cleanser. So it can get irregular and it's a very bitter herb. So it works on your cells, it works on your bile ducts and all that. So it helps the liver and all them things. But cascara sagrada is a very, very powerful herb that they can so use that, and drink water. So is that like an ongoing detox? Are like you say you okay, you say it's do it for seven days? It's ongoing. Why are they trying to change up where you do, you know? Um, so you know, every every time one of the things people could do towards a healthier lifestyle. If you know you're not the type of person who could go cold turkey or whatever, all you do day by day, you just try to make better choices on what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. You're walking to a bodega and you go to the cooler, instead of reaching for the soda, pick up a bottle of water. You understand? Um, you know, instead of going to the snack section and, and think, just buy a, a pack of nuts or something, you know? Stay away from all them crazy stuff, you know, with all these colors and all these crazy things you cannot even pronounce in the back of it. You want to eat simple things. So it should be, um, you know, walnuts or, or, or I just call them things arbitrarily because everybody wouldn't be on the sebi thing, you know. So some people go hear this whole thing and say, Totti following sebi, but you say pecans or you say pistachio. This is for people who are going to transition or whatever. Just simple food. You understand? Eat some almonds instead. You know, eat some walnuts instead. Eat, eat some, you know, cashews instead or whatever. As opposed to buying some crazy Twix or whatever craziness they have. You understand? Right. And all these um, these kind of chips they have. You know, I don't even know the name. Rap and all this craziness. You understand? You, you told me that yeah. years ago. When I, when, like, when I first met you, you had said... You know, you say, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. It, it makes sense. It. Like, if you can't yeah. pronounce it, don't, don't eat it. Yeah. Well, that, means yeah. it's been, that means it's been put together in some type of laboratory. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. And they don't want to tell you what it is. 
It's the same thing they do with the, with the, with the medication. When you hear the names, you want to know. Did they take some alphabet or something and just take a Come all together. <laughs> yeah, and whatever. Come up. They, they name it that. Plavix and none of them thing have no names. You understand? So it's just ridiculous. And we keep just listening to these crazy people. You understand? It's about time. You understand? Years ago, we used to be listening to the priests and them. Well, they see what happened with that. Up to now, they're still feeling the effects. They was listening to the priest. The priest used to advise them everything. Now today, everybody listening to the doctor. As soon as they tell them something, they're going to have to ask the doctor. I don't know when they get so obedient. They ain't listening to their parents. They ain't listening to the boss. They ain't listening to the teacher. Now everybody listening to the doctor. Husband ain't listening to the wife. Wife ain't listening to the husband. Let, as soon as me, they say something, doctor jump in. Yeah, they don't start listening to the doctor. They, they, listen listen to, they listen to the doctor more than they listen to people that kind of, you know, research. And as we know that the doctors, they call them practicing because they're just practicing. And also, um, one thing that I found out, like, you know, I, you know, we, Culture in Christ Radio, we subscribe to the truth of the Bible. Um, us being, when I say us, the blacks, Latinos, brown people, us being God's chosen people, and other people can be, you know, grafted in if they, you know, follow the commandments through the Most High God and the Son Christ. But uh, one one thing that I that I um, that I found out when you when you look up the word witchcraft in the Bible, Some and if you look that up, yeah, farm, there you go. It says it goes back to pharmacy yeah, key. and pharmacy. key. What do they call it? You know, it's pharmaceuticals. Drug. So it tells yeah, you that Drug. in the Bible you that. Won't tell that 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 uh that pharmaceuticals a pharma key is basically witchcraft which has our yeah, people man. in bondage and that's yeah, why man. they would go to listen to them versus listening to a genesis versus listening to a doctor savior or christ lifestyle you know that's, that's crazy yeah. right there you know yeah man the work so the flesh is manifested by those <laughs> la strivousness witchcraft is one of the words there yeah pharmacia we're getting so-called english word pharmacy drugs yeah man so the works of the flesh has to be manifested all these things have to be manifested but a lot of people think because um prophecy is being fulfilled or has to be fulfilled that the defenseless or whatever no you 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 the elect you the chosen have to stand up still That's you understand right. you still have to do your part and you have to hold fast to that which is good and true you understand and you have to live because them doing what them had to do so you have to do what you have to do you understand i skip my any song say some say never but it never done come it's here it's been winning but the lovers ain't done we are the lions we are the chosen we be gonna shine out the dark that's the only how it's gonna be done you understand and them fellas been pumping out some serious serious lyrics and some serious serious things you understand for years now you see but nobody was listening the rastafari movement they were saying certain things. All these things, they was ahead of the curve a long, long time ago. And they talk about dashing away everything. And they beat down that movement. And now today, it, it still continues to strive. You understand? So the liberty of it, it was always there. And it was always with our people, heralding that word. You understand? Always. Because we know, you know, we know. But a lot of us now, they're using these drugs and all these chemicals to bring us down and to make us docile. But still, we continue to rear our heads because what we forge from and what we make from, we straight carbon. That's why we just color. You can't destroy carbon. You understand? The very universe, everything is carbon-based. Without carbon, is no life. And that's why we, the, the, the color we are. Now, some people use the word menelin and all them things. You understand? But this is life, what we is. That's why... They're trying to create this and mimic this. That's why they had a tanning bed and all them things. And they make all the crazy stuff now for you to put on your skin to bleach out. Yeah. Because they know the strength that this is. You see? And this is what helped me. And the sun is what helping me. But now we're running from the sun because they tricked me out of the very sun. As slaves, we was in the sun from sun up to sun down. So now the sun right over, we back. And all we come out with is stronger because when we go lie down in the bed and sleep in the night, we skin like a solar solar panel. You see, we had the solar panel up there, 
and in the day it absorbs the sun and night take it upon light and all them things. It's a lot of things going on with the body and the skin. And it's doing stuff unbeknownst to us. Because we're living organism, you know, we're living electrical cell. So things happening that we don't know. So once we stay out from the sun, once we take the foot and stop grounding off, it's affecting us. We need to plant the foot on the ground too. As much as we could. I started back doing that for a long time. You know, because you're in Babylon and you're busy, you're running here, you're running there and helping this and doing that and neglecting self. This is why I end up cutting my locks and I look into grow back. Because my hair start dropping and all these different things because I ain't drinking no water, enough water. My foot is planting on the earth and I just run in around Babylon with all these different electromagnetic things coming off the, the computer, the high tension wire, everything you could think about. The waves, it's coming through us, all the phones and all these things. You understand the radio waves, the, the, everything is Bluetooth now. You see? So when you're watching 5G and all them things, I waste that time. You understand? The Bluetooth, all them things passing through me. We have it all them things. And so we surround ourselves with this negative electrical charge. And the resonance is really not good for us. The only way we could get off the body is by planting the foot in the earth. Because your very house, when they do your electrical system, they take a ground wire you know, and run it and run it into the ground. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have to plant it. So how come we know, but it's scared. We can't say, boy, if you touch the ground, you'll get worms. And... Nonsense. I grew wow. up with my foot on the ground. You understand? Playing barefoot and all them things. Because you can't use your one shoe. Because your shoe is to go to school. Then you have another shoe maybe to go to church and all them things. You understand? And wherever old sneakers, that had a lot. So you cannot play with it. So your foot on the ground. And then they scare you with germs and things. Well, no, those are micro life, microorganisms. Were you scared about germs? I tell people, I grew up with one cotton board in the house. We cut cheese on that, meat, fish, bread, everything on that cotton board, and you didn't get sick. As children, you go pitch marble. When a mango fall, you take that same hand and you just wash up, wipe off the mango, and you put it in your mouth and your hand black, you know, and you ain't getting sick because you continue to live a natural life and you're following the cycle of life. So you can't get sick because your body building immunity towards that. The animals do the same thing. Wild yeah. animals do get sick. Domesticated animals get sick. So we domesticated. This is why we need supermarket around us. We remove ourselves from God's garden. Look at something. New Jersey is supposed to be the garden, the garden state. state. Where the food? Where is the food? When I come here in America, I say, but I tell my friend of them, when I go to America, man, I'm going to need plenty of apple because I think it might apple falling on the ground and wasting. Well, the first thing up, I come in winter time. Me never know all the leaves come off the tree and all them things. So I see all these, I thought the trees and them dead. And my sister living right opposite Wheatway Park there. I said, but all these dead trees and all them things. I said, no, it's winter time, blah, blah, blah. No apple, no nothing. And it's the, the garden state. No food. <laughs> no food. They get rid of all the food. And guess what they do? They're tricking people. You know, you think they're doing a good. Plant a million trees. Up. Look at the trees they're planting. No food. Why don't they plant some peach tree, some pear tree, some yeah. apple tree, plum tree, so that people could get, if something happened, you could pick. So the people who are doing these things, they hijack it. They are pure. You unmute. You've muted yourself. You understand? They yeah. local, they're not planting food. They're not planting food. Nah, you're right, man. You, you. I mean, you're definitely bringing it out, man. Um, going back to the to the feet thing, and I grew up down south, so I'm from Chester, South Carolina. You know, you know, born and raised. I go back and forth from Jersey to South Carolina. So I've always ran around with no shoes on, and even up right. here, walk around with no shoes on, and 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 not until. About three years ago, I seen something on the internet. It was called like you should people should be grounded. I was like, what is grounded? I was like, yeah, I was like yeah, I've been yeah, doing yeah. this my whole life. That's how I've been doing this my whole life. Like I even like when I'm when I'm up in Jersey, like when I moved to Jersey and I grew up in Jersey, people like, yo, why are you sitting around the backyard with no shoes on? I grew up like that. It feel good on my feet. It's very right. it's very relaxing. Just you do rubbing it, your feet in the dirt or rubbing your feet in the grass or walking around like oh. you're gonna get worms on your feet, so you're gonna get glass. I ain't worried about that. I'm okay. 
It's but that's it. You see where yeah, you see where now. You see where do. Yeah, they're selling earth and mat and all them things. You see what they do? It's all marketing. I want you to go to that war. So they are hurting mat. They are all kind of hurting stuff. You know, that's because that's the market for it now. You know, and you just plug it into it because why it work? Because the ground that they put is running, is running into your socket. So the earth and mat and all that thing, that's what it is. Because they run the ground wire into the ground. So once you plug it in and you put your foot on the mat, it's like you're on the ground. Wow. So they know all these things. I have I have uh, another question for you. I got from another uh someone sent me this question. It says, um, I'm going to wrap it up after this. You know, I, 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 enjoy, I can speak to you for hours. So we definitely yeah. not going to invite you on for another one. Give thanks, but uh, yeah, someone, someone, uh, praise the most high, give thanks. That's right. Um, someone asked, this is a, a female listener. She said, how to build up estrogen in the body and rid themselves of a hormone imbalance? Uh, it's not even so much a building up the estrogen. But what it could do, what it could do is um, consume like the Damiana. D A M A I A N A, Damiana herb, uh, like the red clover, that's a very good herb too. Um, the red raspberry, herbs like peony. But once they start with simple things like the Damiana, the red raspberry, the red clover, um, you know, those herbs is gonna help, it's gonna help a lot, you know. Those herbs, um, catnip is very good too. The catnip. It's very, very good, you know? Okay, yeah. and, that, and that helps out with hormone imbalance, right? With hormones and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That damn is serious. Now, you know, that, that's, uh, epazote, that, I, epazote is a good one, too. Epazote, E-P-A-Z-O-T-E. -E. The epazote is a very good herb. Now, those herbs you just, those hmm? herbs you just, those herbs you just named, they're for hormone imbalance. Men and women can take them? Or yeah. yeah, yeah, men and women can take those. Um, the thing about it is, um, like for the woman, they want to stay away from like the milk and the cheese, you know, and stuff like that. Um, if they insist on eating milk or cheese, they have to do the goat. The goat is more compatible. It's on the alkaline side. Um, it's the same size as the human, as opposed to that cow. That cow is one of the worst things they could uh, consume. So if they insist. But keep the animal products that are minimal, um, you know, and drink plenty of water. But consume that tea, and they go start seeing a big, big difference. Um, the nettle is good for them too. The greens to build up the blood. Uh, the red raspberry is, is really champion, you know, for stuff like that. At the episode, too. yeah, there's a few herbs, but um, those are some of the simple herbs that they could readily find um, quick, you know, at the local store, just online very quickly and it's simple and um none of those herbs are bitter the damiana tastes good the red clover don't really have a taste you know um so they could boil it and drink it it doesn't matter you know how much um you know they could play around with it they could buy it in a pill form yeah um stuff like that okay one last question um oh, oh for all those that's listening if you're in new jersey and you need some herbs definitely go to corona health foods that's on South Orange Avenue in North New Jersey. Corona yeah, yeah. Health Foods. Go, uh, yeah. Go 347. There. What is it? It's 347 um, South, South Orange Avenue. 347 yeah. South Orange Avenue. You definitely want to go there. We get all our herbs from there. When you go in there, and uh, you can ask them brothers, you know, what you, you know, you can ask them brothers and sisters in there. If you're struggling with something, they'll 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 get you right. They'll let you know exactly. What you need to take and everything like that. And you definitely want to go check out Blueberry Cafe uh, where, where Brother yeah. Jennifer worked. Um, one last yeah, one. We have also, Sorry, we also have two other, two other spots right next to the Blueberry, which is the Zucchini Bar and the Aqua Fit, where we have like the alkaline water. Um, we do vegan sushi and stuff like that. And then we also have the vegan dessert. You know, all the dessert you could think about, but it's just um, plant based, soy free. Yeah, the tree restaurant, we don't mess with soy and canola oil and stuff like that. Yeah. And the food is great. I'm telling y'all, the food yeah. is great. Matter of fact, I'm about to go over there for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you working well, tomorrow? Working. Tomorrow, you working? Taco Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, man, working? Taco Tuesday. Walnut taco, black bean taco, um, wild rice and mushroom, wild black rice and pasta and mushroom, stuff like that, wild black rice soup. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow is Taco Tuesday. All right, so I'm mm-hmm. going to – and that's one thing. He got, like – they have, like, a little uh, – they have a, a certain regimen for each day. Um, so yeah. definitely want to check them out. I have a, another question. Um, someone mm-hmm. asked me about Kratom. I didn't understand what they mean. They said – Kratom? About, yeah, K-R-A-T-O-M. T-O-M, but, yeah, yeah. Some people use it in place of weed and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it yeah, is. But, yeah, so, some people use it in place of weed. So they smoke it. They because someone just like to like, ask them about cradle. Like, oh, what is this a disease? Yeah, yeah. They use, it, they use it. Yeah, they use it for for that that type of um, you know, in place of the, the marijuana and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of what people have to be careful with all these things they're coming out with. Um, it's really not it's really not the best thing. Even that medical marijuana, you understand? Um, That's a drug. They find man. A way, yeah, they find a way to to mess with the plant, and once they could control it, then they make you get it. So years down the line, you're going to see the fallout behind it, and nobody would link it to it. The, the, the marijuana plant is a very good plant, especially the original plant. What I'm dealing with is something totally different. You understand? Um, but the marijuana plant is a very, very good plant. Some people smoke it. You could drink it. Um, you could cook with it and stuff like that. It's a healing herb. You understand? The same way you could smoke damiana, you could smoke chickweed. Um, you could smoke any damn... Um, dry bush you understand um and do rituals with them um the mug water and stuff like that but most people use the marijuana right but um i don't subscribe to that medical marijuana that they have they already do what they had to do with it and people go see the fallout down the road i'm you pretty know, sure once the government got their hands into it it was like you, yeah, man, you already weapon. know yeah, you I know. wouldn't touch that with a ten foot pole. Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had, he had a Christ lifestyle. We don't subscribe to no marijuana. Although I used yeah. to be a part, I used to be a partaker back in the day. You know, but yeah. you know, a long time ago. But we don't subscribe. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Don't subscribe. Yeah, to, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, the crack yeah. um and, and all them things. Um, some people use the damiana and all them things. Um, you know, just get the basic stuff if it and you could use it. You could burn it as an incense too. And then heal the vape and all them thing because it has its place. You understand? Because the, the, the marijuana itself, like you could use it as a say, like in an incense holder and burn it. And you, you go sleep in the vapor in the room and it relaxes and stuff like that, where you can make tea. Because it's a natural plant, nothing is wrong with it. But a lot of people use it for recreation and all them things. You know, but that's not what it's for. Um it do a lot of healing. It's very good. Yeah. You could use it as an eye wash and all them things, but not that thing they, they're dealing with. No, no, I don't no, no. mess with it. And even hemp is a good oil. You know, the hemp oil um, yeah, is hemp, a good oil. Yeah. And I think um, I read some somewhere before that, like, you know, certain, certain everything has an energy or a frequency. So they say, yes, like, uh, yeah. cotton has a frequency. I think the highest frequency for clothing was, like, clothes made out of hemp. It was clothes made out of hemp, then under that was the clothes that are made out of um, linen, and then silk, and then I believe cotton. Those are like the highest quality, uh, like like uh, clothes that you can wear that has a right, high yeah, frequency right, and it has yeah, high yeah. vibration healing power. So yeah. hemp was mm-hmm. that first one. So definitely, you know, I, I, I you know, for, for me personally, if people are gonna go that route, I, I say, you know what, deal with the hemp, you know the. The, 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 uh, the yeah, oil, but the marijuana is the under the hemp that, family yeah. too. That's under the okay. hemp family. They, they say hemp and all them things, but um, yeah, all right. yeah. Well, listen, mm-hmm. I thank you. I thank you for coming on. Any closing words or anything you'd like to say before we wrap up, brother? <laughs> well, um, just to the to the general public, you know, um, just just take this journey one day at a time. Um, go at your pace. The, the thing is, um. Just keep moving forward. If you know you could take baby steps, then don't just at least take the baby steps. So at least you're moving forward and everything is decisions. So always be conscious of what you're putting in your mouth. You understand? Because um, when you put it in, it's harder to come out. So always try to make the best decisions possible. Um, You may not go vegan or plant-based or whatever, but always try your best to put the best in your mouth because you know, your body really tried to be there for you. And um, you the only way for it to continue is for you to be there for it. 
you know, and um, whatever steps you could take, just make the step. So if it's baby step, do baby step. If it's giant step, think, but just don't stand up and, and wait, like, wait around like a golf ball to be hit, you know, and um, start looking, um, you know, for these different petitions on um, sending it to Congress and signing up all them different petitions as the no vaccine and all these things. Even stuff you're not interested in, like, um, I don't want to keep you, but a lot of times, like, for instance, one time they was banning these, these sodas in, in, in New York, the supersized sodas, right? And um, yeah. not be quite all drink soda, but I wasn't in agreement with it because, you see, today you, tomorrow me. So, you know, you're going to say, well, yeah, soda's not good, so, yeah, ban it. But then they ban soda, but guess what? They're going to be coming for something you're interested in and you're going to be doing. You understand? And that's what they do. You understand? So they attack the things that they know most people not for in the first place. And then slowly but surely they come and start to attack your liberty and your so leave everybody with their choice. Who wanna drink soda, let them go ahead. Because even if your band is super size, they go buy four to get the same <laughs> on your band. You understand? Yep. So you can't stop it. Who wanna smoke cigarette? They go still go find this cigarette. Who wanna drink liquor? They're gonna go find. So leave them. They have everybody have free will choice. You understand? Leave them, let them operate the free will choice because they're going to be seeing the consequence. So you reap the consequence of your good eating habits or whatever, and they go reap the consequence of their bad eating habits or their bad whatever way they have. You understand? Now, without exception to the rules, some people do all the worst thing and nothing happens. And some people do all the best thing and everything comes down on them, <laughs> you know, like thunder. But hey, you just had to do your best. You know, man, that's you're about right. it. You're right, man. Thank you for those kind words. Again, um, mm -hmm. uh, this is episode seven of Culture in Christ Radio with the Christ Lifestyle featuring Brother Genesis of Blueberry Cafe, Juice Bar and Grill uh, at 547 Central Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. You can check out their website, I love blueberrycafe.com. They also got the Zucchini Bar and Grill right next door, and they have a, a water. It's like a water bar uh, that's right next yeah, to Yeah, yeah, it's a water and gym. Yeah. Water and gym. And, yeah. And one one last thing, um, to help with the COVID, because um, I'm talking with our sister in heavy, and one of the things um, she discovered, and we discovered that helps with this whole respiratory problem is um, the thyme, the herb thyme, and fenugreek. You combine them two herb, and you boil it, and you drink it. It's going to clear up all that whole respiratory COVID nonsense. Uh, the thyme and the fenugreek, it helps a lot with that. Quick wow, man. C-H-Y-M-E. It's a normal kitchen, um, kitchen herb. I think we got some of that in our fish. In our, in yeah, our man. Everybody well. has that, especially <laughs> thyme. The fenugreek, I mean, uh, fenugreek is one of the herbs they use to make the, um, the, curry, the, the curry masala. So fenugreek, um, the Indians call it methi. It's F-E-N-U-G-R-E-E-K. So you combine them two things, that's very good. Um, things like mullein, hyssop, longwort, all that good for it because this is a whole respiratory thing, you know, yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that will help with the respiratory thing. All right, if y'all like this episode and y'all want Brother Genesis back on here again, uh, we're going to try to set that up again. Uh, you know, put some comments. When y'all watch this, put some comments uh, down below. Uh, you know, in the in the uh, put some comments, uh, share the video, share the information. If you have questions for him, you know, definitely uh, send us an email. Just put the put the questions in the in the comments, so that way next time we have him on the on the show, we can definitely ask him the questions. Again, uh, today's episode was brought to you by LivingWater.MyTime.com. Uh, Brother Genesis was talking about a lot about water, so if you want some fresh ionized alkaline water for your house, you can reach out. Send, uh, go to livingwater.mytiant.com. Get you some fresh alkaline water. Stop what you're doing right now. Go subscribe to ChristLifestyle.com. Get your 15% off. Um, go check out our latest book, Hustle and Truth, where we discuss, uh, we discuss finances, we discuss health, we discuss uh, uh, family preparedness, we, we discuss uh, you know everything being linked to the Bible, as you know. Certain things that we talked about today it all linked back to the scriptures uh, by the power of the Most High God. Um, so, Brother Genesis, we thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you, and uh, you know, you know, we definitely gonna, you know, uh, try to set some up with you again, brother. 
All right. No problem. Give thanks. I give thanks. All praise be to the most high God. This is Culture in Christ Radio with the Christ Lifestyle, episode seven. Peace, blessings, shalom. Peace, brother. Peace out. One love. Yeah, man.